let's go. Right, so what we're we doing today, we are going to Brentwood, which is a little bit different from Cambridge, isn't it? A um, bit more me, a bit more Essex, isn't it? Um, there is a lorry that is trying to kill us. Um, we're doing an a EICR, a board change, and an Anderson install. So it should be should be quite interesting actually. I'm quite looking forward to it. Um, only thing is, I feel like it's going to be a nightmare because it's a really old consumer unit, and uh, I think they've had work done since this consumer unit's been in. And uh, well, I say really old. It's just a main switch consumer unit, so there's no RCD on it. So it's at least pre. 16th edition isn't it um, and you think well why has someone done work recently that's not warranted to change in the consumer unit they've probably potentially they've not done it very well or it's been DIY so it'll be quite interesting to see what we find but I've just got that little feeling that we're gonna have problems um, because we've we've basically what we'll usually do is encourage an EICR before a board change um, but they kind of want the board changed regardless of any faults that we have to put right. We've allowed it some extra time for putting right basic faults that we find. So I'm going to do some insulation resistance and some basic tests. Um, and then I'm going to start changing the board and rectify any faults as we go. So yeah, it should be an interesting one. Um, thanks for tagging along with us. As always, as uh, Jordan says, but I very rarely say, but it does really help the cause. Um, if you're enjoying the videos, give us a little thumbs up and subscribe. Now, if you can't do it for me, do it for the children. You know, think of the children that you'll be helping by doing that. Um, yeah, enjoy guys. Right, we're, we're just listening to bangers because it's a long journey and we're stuck in traffic right now, just coming off of the M11. Um, so, uh, which by the way, for the American followers of ours, um, the M11 is a motorway, which is a highway. Um, yeah, we're listening to some bangers. Today is brought to you by Electric Feel, MGMT, but unfortunately we can't actually play that because it's copyrighted. So for now, enjoy a little montage of, um, of some nice non-copyright music. Thinking of, um, Jordan's left a little bit of cash in here um, from when he was driving out. I'm thinking of getting myself a little car. I don't know, what do you reckon? Probably get a few quid change as well out of that. Probably still get lunch. So this is gonna be an absolute nightmare. I see it already. Um, because we've just got here. We're just having a little look around. I'm just planning to see if this consumer unit will actually fit into that little space. If not, I've got a contingency in my little bag. I might have to bring all the cables into this and then extend them down in a piece of conduit or something into the board underneath, I don't know. That's my backup plan if they don't fit. I don't think it's gonna be very easy to get it looking nice. And then when I was just having a little look, what I found up here, he said the old guy that was here before, they used to call Mr. Budge. And um, well, it doesn't take you long to see why. All right, have a look at this. Let's see which circuit it was on. So, so that's that's on the socket circuit. So I have to find find where that's coming from and disconnect it, or or maybe put it into a junction box up there or something like a little. Screw it to the underside of the stairs, like a little whisker box. Either way, it's not good, is it? It's not a good start. Not good. So, uh, I just I just have that feeling that it's going to be a nightmare. And um, I feel like this nail going through the screw, the nail going through the cable there is kind of um, the writing on the wall. Um, and like I say, they've, they've obviously had an old consumer unit an old 3036 board or something here recently because you've got a fairly new fuse wire um, so they've had the consumer unit changed and how's that for labeling 
garage power garage lights. So that was done recently by an electrician. I mean, I know not everyone's going to be using the brother, brother label printer, but I mean, come on, I think you can do better than that. So let's um, get some first impressions, shall we? Yeah, so we've got, yeah, there's gonna be a bit of a pain, isn't it? Got a lot of the cables coming down from above, some coming in on the capping there from the side and then this one here coming up and over. See, usually I like to do a trunking wrap, like get a trunking, piece of trunking on top of the consumer unit. I like to put a piece of trunking on top of the consumer unit so you can't actually see the cables entering the board. Um, but I'm just going to do what I can do really on this one. Um, it's a bit annoying, again, for OCD's sake, it's really nice when all the cables come in from one place, like all from the above, all from the back, or all from below. I'm not a fan of all of the entry points in one, which we kind of seem to have. It's gonna be poof, just a big compilation of cables. You can see here where, I know like everyone says this is a joke. Oh, the seal fell off. Seal on the meter tails is already off and the uh, thing's cut. The seal on the actual meter itself has already been cut. So the main fuse in the meter has been cut. So, um, with that in mind, I might as well um, replace the tails from the meter upwards with um, 25 mil tails. Um, and I've got some nice colored flexi tails, which I think I'm going to put in. But yeah, we'll see, we'll make it look nice. We'll just have to plan it. I'm gonna start doing some tests. Um, it should be quite interesting. Okay, so I have, um, I've isolated all the circuits other than the lighting circuits and um, I just want to see if this is actually coming live or if it's just picking up induced current. So um, it feels like quite old manky cable. There it goes, it feels just a bit sticky. Not quite green goo sticky but definitely somewhat oxidised. So what I'm thinking is, let's do a ring continuity check to see if this is actually on, actually on the ring, or if it's just an old cable that's not being connected to the consumer unit. I mean, that might have been like an old ring, and the thing that my volt stick's picking up is just uh, like some induced transient current of some sort. We're going to set it to continuity. Okay. and just do an, a couple of end to ends. Yeah, so it's not got ring continuity. So I, th I mean, I think that's a good thing. I haven't decided yet. No, let's see if any of these have continuity to the consumer unit, which we don't, we don't really want. Nope. That's good. So I think it must it must have just been inducing a current. I don't think they're actually live. So that's good, that's something. Yeah, so what we'll do now, just to be sure, I'm going to switch those circuits back on and see if this comes live. So we'll switch to, so we don't blow a fuse in the meter, switch to voltage. Yeah, so I'm getting two volts. You can hear how. Those breakers sound a bit poppy. Yeah, two volts, one volt, one volt. So it's just transients, I think. Four volts down to one volt, five volts down to two volts. Yeah, just induced current. That can happen sometimes when you've got um, non-contact test um, volt sticks. See, it's not like exactly a GS8838 approved <laughs> meter, is it? So. You're sometimes going to get um, that happening. Yeah, they're dead. I'll probably still box them up anyway, just to play it safe, because I'm not a fan of leaving things to chance. We'll put those cables back up there for now. And then at some point over the course of the next day or two, we'll fit a, uh, a whisker box up there. Let's do some tests on the rest of the circuits. So, Got a range cooker there, switch that off. 
we'll do the socket. So we've already asked the client if we can turn their power off. Um, the other thing I'm seeing is a bit of an issue is I don't see any cables in here for bonding. I mean, I see that going down to the old gas line that's been capped off, but I still I think they still have another service. And you've got these lines here, um, which I presume is some sort of supplementary bonding, or maybe there remains equipotential bonding back in the day. Um, but unless they've got plastic services and I can prove it's extraneous, I will have to I will have to bond it. So yeah, I'm I'm just not not got a good feeling about this job at all. So um, just to fill you in on the EICR, finding lots of little pieces that I don't like. So this here, this little isolation switch is on a 50 amp breaker, a C50 MCB I think. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure that this isn't a 50 amp isolator. Um, this is doing the oven. Although I'm not fully convinced that this oven actually needs 50 amps. So what I suspect is behind here is probably going to be a meaty old cable, like a 10 mil or something, if it's on a 50 amp. Um, and then a little flex going out of it to the oven. Please don't be bad. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, I spoke too soon, it's terrible. <laughs> Get a little close up of that. I'm not a fan. And the other thing is, obviously that, is new cable there we've got old cable at the board so what does that mean that means there's a junction box between here and there so it's not a good start is it i'd like to get these kick boards off Let's see if we can see the junction box underneath and the other thing that i'm not a fan of it's a little mini consume unit with gaps inside of it um which is no good i mean i can see the bus bar so i can touch that with my finger and also it's, it's hardly accessible, you know, this was full of cabinets. I never would have found it if the customer hadn't have pointed it out to me. So I'm going to have to try and find a way to... To be honest, I don't, the screw is completely covered by a piece of wood, so... I've got no chance of accessing that, it's just a nightmare. Um, obviously, any consumer unit or junction box, unless it's a maintenance-free connection, needs to be accessible to be maintained as per the reg. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this really accessible. And I don't think it quite meets the IP rating that's required. Consider I can quite easily get my finger in there as well. So that's no fun. Um, I'm going to see if I can, see if I can get this junction box cover off and we'll take it from there. Call it a sixth sense, call it what you like. But my spidey electrical senses were tingling as soon as I walked in and it's turning into a house of horrors. So first of all, let me prime you with something. So the person who wired did all the electrics here, this was done last year or the year before. Um, they're actually quitting electrics, I was told, because they want to go and teach at the technical college. He's gone now to be a lecturer, which is quite frightening. Let me show you why it's frightening, okay? So, you know, I said I've got new cable there and old cable at the consumer unit. So obviously there's a joint somewhere between there and there. Um, well, I found the joint, I'm just taking the kickboards off. At least, thankfully, it was accessible. Um, that's it there. <laughs> so, it's just an absolute <laughs> horror show. Let's have, let's, do you know what, let's, I'm honestly not taking this off yet. Let's take this off and just see the circuit's um, dead. Let's see how the college lecturer has jointed this cable. This is honestly probably the worst installation that I've seen in a long, long time. I haven't got my knife on my, on my person and the camera is rolling, so just go for the old, the old key approach. Oh yeah, lovely. <laughs> just like I suspected. How much money do you want to bet they've probably twisted the earths together on this as well? Oh, and there you go. There are a lot of words that I'd like to use to describe this, but I don't want YouTube to demonetize the video. So, wow. I mean, the only thing I can really say to that is just, wow. Let's have a look over here. Next, next horror story begins here. 
This is exactly how I found it. I have not touched it or whatever. So you've got all the earths twisted together there. We've not even started on the lighting yet and all the lighting's been swapped. So goodness knows how that's going to be. <sighs> Can you edit like my soul and spirit leaving my body and going to another dimension away from here? Put in the comments whether or not you think we should release the name of the electrician and lecturer that's done this and get him banned from teaching in every college across the world. I mean, you've got some nice stranded cable there that's been shoved into a push fit where you go. All sorts of different sizes. All the copper showing, earths again twisted together. Same story over here. Same story. This is why I'm so glad that we allowed for the EICR and we didn't just start with the board change. I've not touched the consumer unit net. Yeah, other than making a bit of a mental plan. I've not started. Well, hello, welcome to my lair. <laughs> um, yeah, thankfully we've not touched on the consumer unit at all yet. So we're not taking any responsibility for the installation yet. We are purely just here to test it. So obviously if we had have done it the other way around and just changed the consumer unit, all of this would be our problem. But thankfully at the minute, it is not. We are just making a report of what we find. This is the best bit. So we've got a wise box, which I find extremely ironic coming from not such a wise spark. Um, that was installed and he said, uh, this is his sort of specialist thing, really clever and garden, light, garden lighting. Um, I don't know about you, I don't find that very clever. Are you getting nice angles in footage of this? Good, because I feel like I want to take this to in court. You've got all of this absolute horror going on. I hope he teaches that at college, not. Get the wise box out, shall we? Do you know what? Just for entertainment, just for the LOL value. Let's, let's take the cover off of this. It looks like I mean, Bob Marley's rolled that, rolled that joint. I don't know who, who does a joint like that and then goes home, goes to bed and thinks, yeah, it's been a good day today. I'm going to sleep well. Oh my goodness. There we go. To be fair, I mean, it's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible, but I was kind of expecting worse in a way. At least he's used um, horrifically oversized earth sleeving. Right, I'll tell you what, just, just also for, for the fun of it, obviously this, this should be rated at I think three amps. I guarantee you it's at 13 amp and bada bing, bada boom. What is the point in using a fuse spur for a lighting circuit if you're just gonna use a 13 amp fuse? Like, put a five or a three, you know, oh, there's literally no point. Oh, what a horror show. Oh, what a horror show. I should have guessed, just, well, I did guess really, just by this consuming it in here. Now, whether or not I'm even gonna be able to get to this is yet to be seen. I have no idea how I'm gonna get that cover off. I've got no chance. If I get that off, I'm not gonna get it back on. Oh. Oh, going out to the garage power or the shed. I'll tell you what, just for the, just for the giggles. Let's go have a little look at the shed, shall we? Oh. So you've got this cable here. If you can see an armored cable sort of just strung across the back that goes into a junction box. And then it falls out of the junction box into a consumer unit in the corner. Um, and the cable has just been laid inside the bush not sure if you can see that. I'll point it out. It's a bit clearer. Just sort of, it's not fixed or screwed or buried or it's just laid in the bush, which, you know, some might do, I don't know. There's the odd, odd cable tie on it. Um, it goes round to these sockets on the way. There we go, look, we've got a little spider pal here. If you'll give me superpowers, move out of my way. Um, yeah, you've got a 30 milliamp RCD upstream and a 30 milliamp there. Um, I don't feel, I feel like selectivity is the least of our issues on this house. So I'm not really gonna pay that too much mind. Okay, so we are 
I've had a change of tack for the day. So it's just a nightmare, basically. Um, this is why I'm not a big fan of domestic electrics, because when it goes wrong, it's so hard to put right. It's not like you can just, I don't know, follow the cable around a piece of cable tray or something. All the cables go everywhere. There's wooden glued down flooring, nice finished ceilings, nicely decorated walls. Um, so what I've, what I've suggested to the client, which the client's happy with, is we're not going to do any work today. <laughs> so we're, we're just going to go home. No, we're going to do work today, but we're not going to do any install. So forget the consumer unit change, the car charger install, all the rest of it. Today is just going to be an EICR all day because I've only started on one circuit so far and we found all of them faults that we found out there. And that was just doing a quick visual inspection. So I'm going to do a really, really thorough EICR. I'm going to take pictures of everything that I find um, and just go from there. I mean, just looking at the consumer unit, I can see a few issues. Um, something interesting for you guys, three phase. You've got three phase here in a house. It looks like obviously we're only using the L3 phase um, rather than L1 and L2 are not being used currently. Um, right, so you've got a 50 amp breaker feeding this six mil. So uh, it's, it's on the nose, isn't it? It's right on the nose for for the size, um, the breaker, is it IT versus IN? Um, and also you've got a 2.5 mil flex out there on the 50 mil, um, on the 50 amp breaker. So that's definitely, definitely oversized. So I put that down as an observation. So that's the first circuit. And we'll do all the test results and things as we go. Next circuit will be the ring. So I'm going to I'm going to get some ring continuity readings, and uh, oh, we'll leave that one on for now. See how they go, and then we'll do the lighting and things afterwards. But uh, funny because I thought that bonding was going to be the I thought that bonding was going to be our biggest problem today, but I think that is going to be the least of our worries today. Um, but. It makes it less stressful because I, I used to get really stressed when I do EICRs when I start to find faults. I think, oh, like because it, it does a couple of things. It makes you feel like you, you, I always worry that the customer thinks you're just trying to swindle them. Like, oh, oh, love, sorry, you got problems here. It's gonna take us a few days to fix, but it's not that at all. It's that it's a case of we really want to do a good job. We want to swap the consumer unit and make sure everything is really safe and up to standards. And uh, I don't want to go to jail, you know? I'm too pretty for jail. So the only option is to do it properly and to make a thorough report of everything that we find, give that to the client. They can then either choose us to do the remedial work or they can get as many quotes as they like against all the pictures and things. But either way, it's a comprehensive, clear report. So um, we'll start doing that and we'll update you as we find things. Okay, as the Germans might say, das ist nur gut. Um, every single one had shocking insulation resistance values, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, I'm going to give the, the benefit of the doubt and say that it's because there could still be connected loads. I mean, I've searched everywhere, but you know what it's like. There's probably an aerial booster in the loft that I've missed or something like that. But at the minute, um, I see no, um, I see no connected loads and every single one has really terrible insulation resistance readings. So I'm just going to do my end to end readings now on my ring and see if that's any better. Yep, so we have an open circuit on the R2. Wow, what a surprise. Not. So uh, what we'll do is we'll jot that down. Oh. Harry and Meghan, how the royal family wrote, wrote us away. Key revelations from the Oprah interview. How interesting. 
Um, right, we're going to write that down. I'll come back to you if there's anything else saucy. Welcome to Corey's classroom. Here's a question for you. Big man or small cupboard? Guess we'll never know. So, today's lesson is brought to you from um, the wrong page, there we go, the right page, page 46 of the on-site guide, sorry, of um, guidance note three, because uh, I've just realized that I'm doing a ring continuity test. I've just realized I'm doing a ring continuity test, who knew it? No, I'm doing a ring continuity test and um, I thought it'd be quite nice since I've had lots of comments um, on my Instagram, people, apprentices, asking me about testing. So this is how I know what reading to expect, because that was a question I had. How do you know what reading to expect when you're doing a ring continuity test? Um, well, the simple answer is, there in the first paragraph, R1, Rn and R2 retrospectively, okay? Line, neutral and earth. If all those cables are the same conductive material, so they're all copper, the same length, the same CSA, cross-sectional area, then the readings should be the same. Except curveball, the R2 conductor in a 2.5 mil cable is, is actually 1.5 mil. So the earth is 1.5 mil, which means, um, so the resistance of the R2 of the protective conductor loop will be proportionally higher than that of the line or neutral loop. For example, 1.67 times for 2.5 mil to 1.5 mil. So basically, basically, as they'd say if you were from Wigan, um, what I'd do is um, I take my R1, so let's say it was 0.4. I would expect my Rn to be about the same. I'd probably, I think it's like 0.05 of an ohm out before you'd really want to investigate. So say I had 0.43 or 0.39, I wouldn't be too concerned, but I'd expect it to be about the same um, on a periodic inspection. So that would be my R1 plus Rn. And then what I would do is I would take the highest of those values, so say 0.43, I'd times that by 1.67, and that is about the reading that I would expect um, to be obtaining for my end-to-end -end continuity on the R2 of my ring. So that, just to tell you again, is page 46, and it's section two. Um, and if you want to know about ring continuity section um, testing, this is guidance note three, um, so that's guidance note three, inspection and testing. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to find all the different information on testing and things in there. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Any questions, just stick them in the comments and Jordan will kindly answer them for you. Okay, so I'm looking here to fill out the section of the EICR, um, schedule of test results. And I'm looking to fill out the section for R1, Rn, and R2. So I'm going to separate the end to ends of the ring final circuits. So that is circuit one, two, three. So we count along here, one, two, three. We're going to take the neutral out, or the neutral, if you're from the northern part of our country. I feel like that's not right. <laughs> I reckon that is for this cable here. So I'll try again you've got solid strand cable here. Oh, hang on a minute, you can actually see the cable is coming out to here, so it's going into that one, okay. Well, there you have it. They're not in any sort of correct sequence. That was obviously not ideal when you're trying to test, but never mind. Thankfully, you've got absolute sparky um, legends on the case. Just kidding, but I'm not, no, but I am. Right, just kidding. So there is the earth, so we'll just expose that a little bit. The copper protective conductor, if you were being really posh. So we're gonna set our tester. Do you wanna show the tester, just so people can see what setting exactly I'm putting it onto? We're going to go R200, which is R low, resistance low. We're going to zero the leads out, like so. So we clamp them together on the solid part of the crocodile clip, and we're going to zero it by pushing that button there. There we go. 
So now we just check they're zeroed. Check that they are separating properly. Lovely. So now go back to the back to the consume unit and check the resistance of that. So we have no continuity there. So if you show the um, test meter there, please, Nathan. So we have over 19, um, sorry, 1,999 ohms. So that's no good. So no ring continuity. I mean, are we really surprised looking at the state of it so far? I wish I could say I was. Um, check that one. No ring continuity. And just for the giggles, let's check the earth. No ring continuity. Let's just check that they're not accidentally earthed against another one. They haven't been mixed up. No. And no. So we have a broken ring there. So on our certificate, we will go across um, and we will have to tick continuity fault on the R1, continuity fault on the RN, and continuity fault on the R2. So that is a problem, isn't it? That will need further investigation. Again, I wish I could say I was surprised. So we're gonna button that up and we'll come back on the next interesting test. Okay, so we're gonna have a little look, see how they've been done. <laughs> Actually looks quite good. What the heck? Wasn't expecting that. I was expecting this to look like that, but I mean, these clicks. Why would you go to the effort and expense of using the click plugs and the little flex and all the rest of it? And actually doing quite a reasonably nice job. And then doing that. How, how is this the same person that did that? Probably a junction box there. It probably is. But a little look. Look see. These lights are idiot proof, hence why I struggle to get into them sometimes. Okay, well I spoke a little bit too soon. They've not used any earth sleeving, but uh, it's just, it's downright lazy, but uh, again, like, I'm just so confused. Why, why you'd go to the effort to do like that nice setup, which that is a nice setup, that's a nice way of doing it. And then not bothering putting any earth sleeving on it. it. It actually blows my mind, to be honest. But to me, not having earth sleeving, it's a code three. It's not, it's not a code two, it's not deadly, it's not dangerous, so. As long as the connections are tight and everything else is okay, I'm, I, won't, I wouldn't fail the install on the lighting. I don't know, maybe some people will disagree with me there, but personally, that's much better than not how I was expecting to find it. I was, I was expecting it just to be earths twisted together and that horrible setup that we've got over there. I reckon probably that one there, by all intents and reason, would be the end of line. Fight our way through the jungle here. Boom, 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 boom. This one's looking like, shall we? Again, so, so bizarre. Wow. So yeah, same story. No earth sleeving, but a reasonably job where they've actually put some effort in it. I mean, I don't know, maybe they were like American or something, because I know Americans don't use earth sleeving. A little tip when you're removing downlighters, because these are also known as sparky mouse traps. these things. They get your fingers and they really hurt. Let's look, look at the force on that. Oof, there's some pain waiting to happen. So I always edge them out like that. And I just, as I'm removing them, I grip there, and it also stops damage on the plasterboard. Have a look, 
nope, not the end of line. But again, same story. No earth sleeving, but a reasonably good job. Other than the no earth sleeving, which an oxymoron. Okay. Other than the really bad job that they've done, it's actually quite a reasonably good job. This one. There it is. There is our end of line. Happy days. That's good. Found there eventually. So what we'll do is we'll switch it off at the board. We'll link it out and get our end of line for this leg. In fact, you know what, I think, I think we'll find an end of line for that circuit and we'll do an R2, a wonder lead test, rather than R1 plus R2. Okay, so I'm going to do what's called a long lead or an R2 or a wonder lead test. So I'm going to connect this end onto the board. This is the end of our wonder lead. And this end, I'm going to go around and touch um, the connections that I want to test to earth. So first of all, we have to zero the lead to remove the resistance of the lead. So um, that has removed. It's removed 1.19 ohms from the reading. So now I'll go and clip this onto the um, earth bar in the consumer unit. Well, the circuit earth to be precise. So this end, I'm going to now touch onto the earth for the circuit and confirm the resistance reading back to the consumer unit. 0 0.39. So now I'm going to test over here as well. And test the nice unsleeved earth. 1.71 minus 1.19. So, right, okay. I'm going to basically, basically, I'm going to go around all of the different metal points that should be earthed and just check that we have got a connection to earth. Yep. Yep. Cool, so that's how we do the wonder lead method. I'm trying to get this box out. This box here is a spur off of the ring. Um, and there's an armoured cable on the other side of the wall, which I've just taken the lid off. I mean, you didn't really have to take the lid off because half the back was missing off at the box. It's filled with water, but I'll show you that later. Um, and then you've got a twin and earth, which is poking out of the back of this breaker here. So I'm hoping if I can disconnect it here, pull the leg back, disconnect that cable, I can then run a new length of armoured cable from that junction box there under the floor, back to the consumer unit, so that the shed and garden electrics are all on their own circuit and they're not coming off of the house. There's one curve ball to this, right? One, I can't, I can't get my screwdriver in there to actually unscrew the box. And two, the other side of that hole, I saw, I'm not even exaggerating, a spider the size of a cat just jump back into the hole. It looked at me, went, with all eight legs and it just slid in. So I'm putting my hand in there knowing full well there's a grizzly bear sized animal that is trying to attack me and it's just the worst feeling ever. I hate putting my hand into blind spaces when you know there's a spider in there. Like, I'm not scared of spiders, but I don't fancy being in the ring with a bear. I'm just gonna try and pull this off the wall because this is ridiculous. Oh, for goodness sake. What genius installed this? I'm just going to rip it off. Oh, there we go. Oh, I couldn't access that screw, so. It looks like there's no evidence of the grizzly bear, thankfully. He must have uh, smelt my masculine authority and run away. Let's see if we can find the other end of that cable and see where it's going. If that spider jumps on my arm, I will absolutely poo myself. I think, 
think it's that one there. Which would make sense if that is part of this horror show. What size cable is it? Yeah, that's gotta be it, isn't it? There we go, that wasn't too bad, was it? This is, this is the point where I, the spider taps me on the shoulder and uppercuts me to the jaw. Right. Basically, the, the customer wants the problems solved regardless. So all the little faults and things that I think would be easy to make safe, like loose connections, bits like that, I'm just doing as I go, pretty much. So a lot of the time we have like silly faults like this. You've got the um, single insulated cable on show from this ground fast pump. Come out of the boiler here. Um, it's a really good boiler this actually. Old Potterton boiler. Probably got a big old cast iron heat exchanger and things in it, but fantastic. Oh, well, that just popped right out anyways. So we will, um, I'm just gonna replace this for them while we're here. Well, I say replace, sorry. We're just gonna repair it for them while we're here. Um, so I'm going to shorten this flex, wire it back in, and then check all of this. Right, well you can probably see by the life that's no longer in my eyes, it's been quite the journey today. It's all of the day, actually. This is Klein's scratch and stick. Really good. No, in all seriousness, this is actually a wicked little screwdriver. Find it in the, um, we'll put a link for it above, but basically it's a ratchet screwdriver. It's just really handy when I'm like testing and doing bits because it's got all the pieces I need in here and I can obviously replace that with other, whatever sizes and bits and bobs I want. Um, I've also got another one which has all the, um, it has 27 in one tamper pieces, but this is the 15 in one um, multi-bit screwdriver. But yeah, really handy. Um, but it also doubles up as a great uh, thinking and scratching stick. So yeah, today has been an adventure. It has been, I feel like we've been watching the sequel to The Princess Bride, um, or The Prince's Bride, I don't even know what it is at this point. Um, we've found a fault on every single circuit. Um, none of the circuits were identified correctly. It was just an absolute shambles, an absolute mess, to be perfectly honest. But the plan is to, we've fixed as many as we can as we've gone. And tomorrow I'm gonna to come back, I'm bringing a friend with me and we're just gonna try and blitz out as much as we can. All the rings that are broken, I don't think are broken because of bad connections. I think they're broken because of incompetent wiring. Um, because like in the office next door, you've got all dado trunking and things and it's just, yeah, you can tell it's just incompetence. So what we're probably going to do is rather than replace, um, rather than investigate for hours and probably end up running new legs back to the board and changing legs around and things, we're just gonna put them all on 20 amp breakers. So you'll have 20 amp rings because looking at the place, there's very little load. There's no circuits that are really loaded up. Even the, the kitchen ring, they haven't really got many appliances. They've got like a dishwasher and a kettle and that's about it. So yeah, we're gonna downgrade all the 32 amp breakers down to 20 amp breakers. The cooker is on a 50 amp breaker, but I've actually just looked at the, the rating on the cooker and it's only a 15 amp cooker. So we're gonna drop that to a 20 amp as well. So it's gonna be a very European board. It'll be 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. And I'd like to make them tens, but I'm not going to. Just, I'd like to make them tens because that's what the Europeans tend to do. Just 10 and 20 amp radials. Um, and six amp RCBOs and the outside power we're going to put on their own circuit, its own circuit. So tomorrow we're going to try and blitz it out. We'll have to do the Anderson install. We've got to run new mains water and gas. We've got to replace the consume unit and we've got to fix an awful lot of faults, especially those ones in the, um, in the kitchen area. So yeah, we, we've definitely got our work cut out for us, but um, I think if we really get our heads down and hope, hopefully 
the the um, there's a cavity underneath this house because it's like a 95 year old house so i'm hoping that we can do go underneath and sort of crawl around and get all the cables run into place um, and if that's the case that will make the job a whole lot easier if not then yeah you'll probably be seeing me cry tomorrow while i try and find another way around um, but yeah as always thanks for watching um, is there a way that you could have seen doing this job easier or better would you have just walked away from this job coding it code r for run and cry in your van um bit of a nightmarish eicr but yeah it's um you have days sometimes where you think this is the best trade ever you have other days where you think why on earth did i um choose to do this as a job no we love it we do love it so uh yeah Thanks for tuning in guys, stay safe, take care, um, do good electrical work, take care of each other and uh, lots of bougie love. Mm -hmm.